During my last holiday, I traveled to the country Israel and Jordan. Okay, and I'm able to float over this large body of water found between Israel and Jordan, known as the Dead Sea. Why can I float on the water easily? To answer this, we have to learn a new concept known as density. This is similar to this demonstration here, okay, where an egg can float in salt water. When we add salt to the water, what we are effectively doing is to increase the density. Therefore, whatever object that goes into the salt water will have a lower density and it will float. So, how can we understand density? Density is defined as mass per unit volume. So, mathematically, is mass divided by volume. The SI unit of density will follow the SI unit of mass divided by the SI unit of volume. So it will be kg per meter cube. Other units that we can use for density include gram per cm cube. Okay, please note that the official symbol for density is not letter D, but a symbol that looks like this, known as rho. Okay, these three examples below shows you for different material, it will have a different density value. If I have an aluminum block, I cut the block into smaller pieces, the density will still remain as this particular value. Okay, because when the block is smaller, mass change, volume also change accordingly. So the ratio of mass per unit volume can okay, still remain as the same number. So every material has a unique density. Okay, so this formula here allows us to understand what density is, and you can also manipulate to make mass the subject or volume the subject. Try this question. A stone of mass 40 gram is lowered into the matching cylinder. The water rises. So what is the density of the stone? Okay, the mass of the stone is 40 gram. The volume of the stone will be the difference in the water level. 50 minus 30. So that will be 20 cm cube. So 40 gram divided by 20 cm cube. Your answer will be 2 gram per cm cube. So please take note of the units. Answer D. For you to convert density value from kilogram per meter cube to gram per cm cube, we'll have to divide by 1000. Okay, please take note and add in this letter C over here if it's missing in your notes. Density also will affect whether an object will float or whether an object will sink. So for example, if density of an object is larger than density of the liquid, the object will sink in the liquid. In short, it means whichever object has a lower density, it will float. So if you look at this speaker, of liquid X, object A, and liquid Y. Let's compare their density. Which of these will have the lowest density? It will be the one that is floating right at the top, X. X has the lowest density, therefore it can float. Followed by A, which are higher density than X, and Y, has the highest density. That's why it's right at the bottom. Okay, so this is the comparison. Okay, this is known as a hydrometer. Okay, we make use of the principle of flotation in the liquid okay, to measure density. So basically, the higher it floats, the greater the density of the liquid. Okay, the concept of density also is used to measure it's also used in submarine. 
okay, where the ballast tank is alternate with air for the submarine to surface. Okay, or it is filled with water for it to have a higher density and therefore it will sink into the sea. Okay, so last but not least, okay, this picture over here is what I've shown earlier, but of course this is not me. Okay, so the tourists can actually float easily on this body of water known as Dead Sea because Dead Sea contain a, contain a very high salt concentration. So this make the density of the water much higher. So whatever object that goes on it has a lower density and it will float. In summary, okay, we have learned mass, weight, inertia and density. Okay, this is the last mind map as a quick overview of what is covered in chapter 4. Please complete your workbook exercises on chapter 4, Mass Weight Density. Thank you.